Hello everybody and welcome back for another installment of the X231 restoration series. I've got quite a few pieces loosely assembled on the bench here. It looks kind of complicated, a little bit busy, but I assure you it's really not that bad. These pieces here are everything that is going to finish filling up the upper axis of this transmission housing. But to simplify it a bit, I'm going to break this up into three main uh, components. We have the first one right here. It's the lockup clutch and planetary gear set assembly for the high-low range torque amplifier. This middle component uh, houses three support bearings and a one-way clutch assembly for this torque amplifier unit. The third part is the upper uh, sliding gear shaft that goes in the transmission. So this piece here, if I can get it out is the only one we are going to be dealing with today. So as always it's time for me to do my compare and contrast between the prototype piece and the production piece. Really no major differences between these. You can see I've got the prototype one disassembled, production one is still fully assembled. I'll get into the reason for that in a bit. But tooth count is the same, gears are the same, shafts are the same, really nothing uh, to note here. We have a very faint 10x number in this gear. That's the only number that I can find on this whole assembly. We have a 10x1820, very hard to see. And compare that with the production version, we've got a 10A6095. And one final detail to note regarding the similarities between the prototype shaft and production. Even if this was a production top sliding gear shaft, this is about as far down as you can disassemble one of these. The reason being, this gear is keyed to the shaft and it is an extreme press fit on the shaft. Even if you could get this gear off, you would need to make sure you pressed it on in exactly the same spot that it originally was for the entire transmission to work correctly. And even the service manual says that if there's anything wrong with this gear, this gear, or this shaft, just to replace this whole assembly. So just wanted to make note of that. So even though the design of those uh, top sliding gear shafts are the same, the installation uh, sequence is quite different. And to explain why, we'll go back into the transmission here. So if you guys have been watching all the videos in this series, you are well aware of the prototype design of this lower gear set that has this steel spacer in between the third gear and second reverse gear. Instead of how a production tractor would have no spacer, but a snap ring in front of third and a snap ring behind second and reverse. Um, also note the last video I told you guys to be mindful of the spacer and how it may cause me problems in putting this top shaft in. We're at that stage right now. So if this was a production tractor and I was trying to feed this top shaft in, you have to get it in through that front hole, drop it in, and then slide it back. But to do that, you would take the snap ring loose from in front of third gear, move it all the way up here until it contacts second and reverse, and also take the third gear, slide it forward until it contacts second and reverse gear. That gives you plenty of room to get that fully assembled upper sliding gear shaft in and positioned once it's loosely in the bearing bars. You would then move third gear back and resecure it with the snap ring, and boom, you're done, good to go. But because this prototype design has this steel spacer and I cannot move the third gear forward, that is the reason why that top sliding gear shaft has to be partly disassembled to get it put in there. Um, if it was a production deal, this is exactly how it could go in with the front gear on, front bearing thrust washer. Instead, I have to have these three pieces off. This gear will be on, sorry about that. But that's the reason why you have to basically install this into that case in a partly disassembled state and then get these components put back on. Much easier said than done. And one more detail to add to all of that. You can see we have this rather egg-shaped relief that's been ground in an otherwise perfectly round bearing bar. That's another little modification that the engineers had to do back in the day to be able to get the back end of that already disassembled top sliding gear shaft to actually have the room to go into this back bearing bore, all because we cannot move the third gear. So guys, I think we just found out why they decided to uh, get rid of that steel spacer and to fight an additional two snap rings on that uh, lower gear set shaft instead. It's kind of a pay me now, pay me later kind of thing, but they must have thought two additional snap rings would be the lesser of the evils. 
Okay, welcome back. I'll catch you up on some progress I've made off camera. I've got this upper third gear installed on the shaft. It just slides on and it is retained by a snap ring. I didn't think I needed to show you that. I've also got the upper sliding gear shaft positioned on the live power shaft because I needed to check the fit of the bushing that's in just inside the back side of this uh, sliding gear shaft. It provides the center support for the live power shaft and I wanted to make sure my clearance was good. It is a nice fit yet. I'm running about 10 thousandths clearance on there and I don't think I want it any tighter than that. So all that is good. Now I'm just taping up any sharp surface that could nick or gouge that new ceiling paint I have inside the gearbox because you know nobody's ever gonna see that anyway but honestly guys this is just what it's like to be me <laughs> so we can now get the top shaft manipulated into the case So now I think you can see how third gear right down here is right in front of this uh, uh, gear that's hard pressed onto the shaft. And that's how moving third gear forward gives you so much more room to manipulate this upper shaft in while fully assembled. So I'm just gonna keep trying to line these up. And we're at the point now where we watch right back here it just there, just clears where that relief was cut. You need every last bit of room that they give you to do that. So before I go any farther here and start assembling the components on the front of this sliding shaft, I first need to get the reverse idler gear placed in that little compartment down there. And even on a production 445 that already has a fully assembled upper shaft, this is the time that you install that reverse idler because you're not going to have room once you center that top shaft on the bearings. So here we have the prototype reverse idler gear, the shaft that it rides on, and the production. And guys, again, really no differences between these gear diameters, tooth count, shafts, everything is the same. They're even retained in the same manner by a set screw that has a jam nut. So pretty simple comparison. Really uh, nothing else to talk about here. No numbers in either one of those to compare either. So installation of this is pretty straightforward. You just uh, set it down in there, line it up with the shaft, and then feed the shaft through until you line up that bore for the set screw. And then run the set screw down until it bottoms. Tighten that and cinch the jam nut. Test it out quick, spins nice, and it meshes well with the second and reverse gear. Good. And now to finish assembling that shaft, I have the upper, second, and reverse gear that will go on next, followed by the bearing, and I do have a new one of those to replace it with, and then the thrust washer. I've also got new bearings and races for the rear of that shaft as well. And this one just slides along the splines, and it's going to be the only easy piece that I have to install in this shaft. Next, I need to get that front bearing pressed on. So I'll first get it slid on as far as it will go by hand, and now to find a way to force it the rest of the distance. So since I don't like hammering together press fit components, if I can help it, I made this setup to press that front bearing on out of some stuff I had laying around. Started out with some three quarter inch threaded rod. This is gonna be the pushing end, so I double nutted it. And I also put two flat washers over the rod to help them out. Next, I turned down this aluminum disc to fit this piece of pipe. got it so the pipe will center itself on there. This pipe will get me out past the end of that top sliding gear shaft. 
Next, I turn down this old cast iron hub to not only center itself inside the spacer pipe, but to also press firmly on the inner race of that front bearing. And finish it off with this steel sleeve to not only protect that live power shaft bushing on the inside, but to also center the threaded rod, and then rounded it out with a couple more flat washers and a nut on the end to pull it all together. So my home built redneck installer tool works so well to press that front bearing on that I turned it around and I pressed the rear bearing onto the shaft with it as well. I literally had about five minutes invested in seating both of those bearings where they needed to be. And granted I spent a couple hours making that tool, but again it's a pay me now or pay me later kind of thing. So uh, it's totally worth having what I needed equipment wise to get those seated in without hammering anything, forcing anything, or damaging anything. Just the way I like to do it. Final piece now that goes on this upper sliding gear shaft is the front thrust washer. Pretty simple installation. It just slides on and goes up against that front bearing. So this is about as far as I'm going to go with this video. We got the top shaft in. Um, it's filling up in there. It's looking more and more busy all the time. It's starting to look like a real transmission. But uh, I have not put this rear bearing race in yet. And I don't have anything to support the front bearing race. Reason being... Kind of brings us right back to where we started, minus a few pieces. This uh, bearing support housing slash one-way clutch assembly is what holds that bearing race for that front bearing. And until I go through this piece, it really doesn't pay to do anything else with this right here. So I'll have to get that front support in there with the bearing race, have it supported at the front. Then I can put the race in the back, tighten the nut down, set the end play, and then check and see how everything's going to go from there. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. I know some of this assembly today got a little bit tedious, but these prototype tractors aren't quite as streamlined as the production versions. So some rather uh, unique problems pop up that have to be uh, dealt with. You saw some of that today, but uh, the plan here is for me just to keep this ball rolling. I'm going to keep throwing parts into that housing and I hope to see you guys back next time.